Share Beirut presents Maya Zangul. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm here today uh, to tell you the story of how a few sketches that I drew and shared online changed my life completely. So hi, I'm Maya Zankul. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator and ex-blogger uh, working in Lebanon. I'm 26 years old and uh, I moved to Lebanon in 2005 uh, after growing up in Saudi Arabia. And when I came here, I was surprised. I saw things that I was not expecting. We all know that we have a bridge right in the middle of the highway. And more recently, we got a mall right in the middle of the highway. And who knows what's going to happen next? Maybe someday we'll have an airport in the middle of the highway. We also have the cleanest beaches ever. We always enjoy going to the beach around here. And we all have messed up uh, lungs, whether we smoke or not, because the air we're breathing is just terrible. And also, we can have two completely different days depending on whether we listen to the news or we don't listen to the news, because if we don't listen to the news, everything is going fine. And then we listen to the news and it's a disaster, like the country is going to a war and it's a big problem. So we can just maybe ignore the news. Now, after I graduated from university, uh, I started working at a full-time job. And this is what my day looked like. So I was sitting behind a desk, not doing anything all day. And I knew that this is not what I want to do. I don't want to be sitting, uh, taking briefs and doing logos all day. I have something to say. I want to do something about all those things that I just listed that, that bother me in life in Lebanon. So I thought, I got hit, I thought, OK, something has to be done. We cannot uh, continue like this, just sitting all, our, all day, uh, not talking about the things that bother us. And that's how almost uh, four years ago now, I started my blog. This is the first version of the blog, so it was very basic. It was a WordPress blog. I just put up a logo quickly and started sharing those cartoons. So I started drawing those things that annoy me and sharing them online. It was very, I was doing it just for fun. At the time, I didn't know there was something called social media. It was just like, it felt the, the right thing to do, sharing my ideas online. And this is how the blog era began. So I started uh, my blog, Amalgam. And I talked about things I saw on the street. For example, the huge dancer posters that are all over the streets which I see every day on my, on my way to work. And this is not the image I want of the Lebanese woman. Other things I drew about was the way domestic workers are treated in Lebanon, which is simply not acceptable. Like, we hear a lot of bad news about it. And I made fun about it, asking where are the Lebanese parents, because we're not seeing them. And the poor domestic workers coming to work here end up which, with much more than they expected. And mostly, what got the big uh, buzz around the blog was four years ago during the elections, which are coming again, brace yourselves. So you all remember this campaign that happened, Swabel Evot, Swaigal Evot, that were plastered all over the street. You remember them? So I started uh, drawing about them and mentioning them and just making fun of them because I felt that the media does not represent me. The mainstream media does not represent me. This is not how I see life in Lebanon. So thanks to the internet and sharing our work online, we have the chance to say things our way, what we believe in. And this is something I consider a success story. You remember this ad for Exotica? It ran about two years ago, and it was for Mother's Day. And it showed a mother and her daughter with huge noses uh, saying, thank you, mom, for the good and the bad. So. This is wrong in two ways. First, it says that a big nose is something bad, and we live in a country where one in three women have their noses done, so this just makes things worse. Plus, it's not really the mother's fault if the nose is, is big, you know? 
So I made a parody and I shared it uh, online and drew a, a mother hitting her daughter and saying, thank you, mom, for hitting me because for the good and the bad. This is just wrong. And there was a whole buzz online about this campaign. It was wrong, it was offensive. And a few weeks later, this is what we see on the streets. They changed the campaign. So this was considered a big success for the online community. It showed that if you said, if you talked about something, there were chances that someone will listen and that a change will happen. And every day I hope that if we continue doing this and talking about the things we don't like, we will reach a stage where there is change, we, where we can draw something, share it with people, and it will affect them and will help them think about things differently. Another example was a campaign done on Facebook. Uh, Femme magazine was asking uh, girls to take photos of their smiles and sharing them. And we were spammed, we were bombarded. All the girls on my Facebook timeline were, were taking pictures and smiling and it was really a sort of spam. So I drew this with very crooked teeth and I shared it. And Crest sent me an email, they said, we cannot accept this, uh, this submission, this is an ugly smile. So I, I said, Who's, who said it's an ugly smile? This is just a smile that makes you smile, so, so it's fine. And then they changed the rules and they accepted the drawing. So again, making people think differently through a simple drawing is, is something really beautiful. So the blog readership started uh, growing and people were going, visiting the blog from all over the world. And I could monitor it using uh, Wupra Analytics, which is done by Lebanese Eli Khoury. And uh, it showed, yeah. And I was able to see people visiting the blog, not just from Lebanon, but from all over the world, and sending me feedback, telling me this is not the image that we see of Lebanon on the news. We thought you had war, we thought you had camels. There are really cliché about the area that are completely wrong. Like, people don't know what's really happening. So when each and every one of us share their pers the personal way they see things, it is going to affect someone. And the blog, Reached, uh, reached all those media channels because for the first time uh, in Lebanon, it was an illustrated blog. Comics uh, based on real life were shared online and a lot of, of uh, views were happening. Something interesting that also happened was that I was sharing uh, the comics under Creative Commons, which Naima will talk about after that. So basically, Creative Commons tells you, you can take my drawings and you can do whatever you want with them. I am sharing them, I am giving them to you to remix them, to do whatever you want. So something interesting happened with the internet campaign, which uh, really made a big change. Now we have 3G. This is back when we didn't have 3G. So they started taking comics and changing the, the words that went with them to give them another meaning. For example, this is a comic where I was saying that I'm so addicted to Twitter that I'm spending hours and this is what's going to happen. They changed the text and they said, this is how a typical internet user looks like because we're waiting for internet to load. And I never thought that someone could take a drawing and change the meaning of it and still use it to spread a positive message. Another example is this one, where this was an original uh, comic about uh, not finding a parking space. So they changed it and said, I exceeded my three gigabyte quota by mistake and I need help paying for it because the internet is so expensive around here. This is another example. Why is there 3G on Mount Everest and not in Lebanon? Because Lebanon is a piece of paradise and it's hard to have 3G on, in paradise. So those are examples of how uh, the comics were used in a positive way. Now, after the blog, like they started by being little illustrations, uh, my friends and readers of the blog suggested to turn them into books so they would reach even a wider audience. So uh, I felt that I have to, to turn them into a book, but there was a problem. I had no idea how to publish a book. This was not something I knew how to do. So I contacted many publishers and everyone was like, cartoons for old people? No, it's not going to sell, it's not going to work. But I knew it was going to work because I had many visitors on my blog. So I decided to do it on my own. And so my first uh, book, Amalgam, was born. It was very hard. I had to, 
to go through many steps and ask a lot. It was the first time I had to print the book and talk to, pub to distributors and organize a book signing, but it was so exciting. And for the first time, I met the readers of the blog in real life. So we broke the boundaries of the screen and we actually met and, and made friends and met a lot of people just from this little blog. And uh, the book reached top five at Virgin Megastore to my surprise. And then the publishers came back telling me, if you want to publish again, we will publish you. But it was too late. I mean, I, I did it once, I can do it again. And one year later, uh, I published my second book, which also reached uh, the top five at Virgin Megastore. And a year later, I was approached by Italian uh, publishers who wanted to translate the book. They were interested in the Middle East, and they said that your books show an image of Lebanon that we are not used of seeing. Like, you are normal almost, you know? This is not what we, you don't have war, you just, this is not what we know about Lebanon. So uh, they published them, both books in Italian last year, and uh, hopefully maybe showing a positive image or a different image than the one we are used in, uh, that are used in media, because we are sometimes misrepresented in, in mainstream media. And from the blog to books to real life, uh, the cartoons grew through events. For example, uh, we made an event where people could come and trace the drawings themselves on ceramic items to take them home. So here again, uh, people felt that they were going back to their childhood. We were all painting on ceramics, painting messages uh, from the cartoons. Each one was tracing the cartoons that they like on items that they could take home. Another cartoon was used for a campaign uh, that uh, at the time we were still smoking indoors and finally now a lot of positive changes has happened for some. Now we're not allowed to, uh, to smoke indoors any anymore, but this was back then we made one night where smoking was not allowed. Also a first was uh, doing live illustrations at the ArabNet conference in 2010 and 2011. And I think it was the first time a conference was being covered in illustrations. So I was doing live drawings telling what, the conf what is happening in the conference. The most recent work is that the drawings became art and they were published in an exhibition, uh, which the, top the main topic was Lebanese food and, tr and culture. And the exhibition was covered on CNN, uh, Lebanese culture serves on a plate because it was like the meza and the things we eat, but in illustrations in a fun way. Also, another example is uh, a magazine for the UN, which used uh, one of my drawings. And people were asking me to draw them the way, uh, they, uh, the way I draw things. So this is how the Zankulizer was born. Has any one of you seen the Zankulizer? <laughs> so it's... Uh, thank you. It's, it's a website, a free app online that allows you to create your own version in the style of my drawing. So you can choose your, your, it's an avatar creating application. You can choose your eyebrows, your eyes, and create all sorts of humans and non-humans that you think you look like. And uh, those are the latest updates. So today, uh, all, of those, all of those things helped me to be able to quit my job, so I'm not sitting behind the desk anymore. I started my own design studio. I was able to take the step, like all this gave me confidence that, and, and I believed in myself and I, have, I made peace with Lebanon. I thought that maybe I can do this full time because this is what I love doing. So this is what I'm doing now. So my website has many things right now, like the cartoons, the books, my work. And now the illustrations are moving and talking. So I started into animation, and this is something I really want to, to work in. And most recently, I started a morning show on Future TV, which teaches women how to use uh, the, the internet and how they can use it to become uh, confident enough to start maybe someday their own business and be, ab and be able to share what they do online. So thank you for listening. Uh, that's it for me. And if you want... <laughs> Thank you. You can contact me on those uh, links. Thank you.